Let's talk about gateway performance troubleshooting. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, aka Guy in a Cube, and I want to round off the month of September with another gateway video, this one about troubleshooting performance issues. This whole month of September I've been doing gateway videos and I thought it would be fitting to end it with this specific video. I've been getting a lot of questions on this, this is a hot topic, and so I wanted to share with you the things that I know right now of how to troubleshoot performance with the gateway. I've got two main areas that I want to talk about. The first has to do with knowing when do we actually need to split up the gateway. So is it under load and when's the right time to move it? The way to go about figuring this out is through performance counters. There are performance counters for the on-premises data gateway. And there are several groups of those counters. They deal with connection opens and when that's failed. It deals with query executions and when those failed. It also deals with knowing the actual connection pool and where how many items are in that pool. So with these counters, we can actually go through and see what is the actual load on the gateway itself. Now, unfortunately, what I can't tell you is that magic silver bullet or that one number that's really gonna determine for you that, yep, when you hit this number, you need to move or create another gateway server and move some data sources around. I don't have that. What you're gonna to need to figure out is what your baseline is, what you're used to seeing during normal business hours, and then from there you can gauge where your peaks and valleys are and how you deal with those. This is true regardless of what you're troubleshooting from a performance perspective. Even when we look at SQL Server, it's kind of the same thing. It's all about resources on the box, load on the box, what's our baseline, and how do we gauge what's right and what's wrong, or when we've got a problem, and when to trigger alerts. Along with the on-premises data gateway performance counters that are part of the service itself, other key performance counters you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to are process memory, overall system memory, and CPU utilization on the box. This is particularly useful if you're actually running the gateway on the actual same machine that the data source is running on. Because we don't necessarily wanna be stomping on memory that the data source is gonna be using. So we wanna be mindful of the things that we're playing with on that same machine. So with the performance counters for the gateway itself, I mentioned that there's groupings of connections, queries, as well as connection pools themselves. And along with that, you've got a grouping of those. You've got ADO.net, you've got OLEDB, you've got ADOMD, and you've got Mashup, four different main items that you're gonna to wanna to look at. So from my experience of using the performance counters, gauging what's happening, what's not, looking at the source code, talking to some of the engineers, I found that the ADO.net perf counters have to deal when we're doing direct query type operations. So whenever we open a connection or execute a query that deals with a direct query data source, that counter is gonna tick. The ADOMD, that has to do with pre-SQL 2016. The mashup counters, from what I've seen, have to do whenever you've got an imported data source. So say if you're using an actual SQL Server data source, it's going through the mashup engine, which is actually the same engine that we use for Power Query and pulling in those items into Power BI Desktop. So that's the engine that we use for imported data sets. So that's schedule refresh and anytime you do an on-demand refresh. And then the OLEDB counter, there's certain data sources that use that. SAP HANA is one, as well as SQL 2016 analysis services. So that should be your experience in what you see gauging there. And like I said, the perf counters are a way to gauge what's the load on the actual gateway itself. One question I've gotten a few times is, okay, well, how do I determine how long my queries are executing for? from a perf counter perspective? And the answer there is you can't. The perf counter is all about number of items, not duration of items. So if you wanna see how many queries are being executed, perf counters are a great way to see that. If you wanna see the duration of a query, that leads me to my next item, which are the actual logs for the gateway itself. There are two things that I wanna talk about in this area for troubleshooting query performance. The first is we wanna actually log the query that's actually being executed by the gateway. You can do this by going to the gateway core config file. This is located in C program files on premises data gateway if you installed in the default location. And inside of that config file, I've got the full path down here or the full config file name right here. It's a long name, so I'm not gonna read it all. 
I just refer to it as gateway core. And when you go into that gateway core config file, there's gonna be emit query traces as the setting that you're interested in. By default, it's set to false. We don't log the actual queries specifically in the logs because that would really bloat the logs, especially if you have a high bandwidth gateway. And so you can set that to true, save the file. You will need to restart the on-premises data gateway Windows service for it to take effect. And once you do that, you will start seeing queries being emitted into the actual gateway log itself. Where are my logs stored? Well, the easiest way to do that is to open up the on-premises data gateway. Just go to your start button, type in gateway, click on on-premises data gateway, make sure you sign in, and you're gonna see two items there to go to log files. You want the gateway logs, and in there you'll see those logs. Also, if you've updated to the latest version of the gateway, you'll also see an export logs button there. When you click on that, that'll put a zip file on your desktop, which will have all of those logs in there for you. So that's another way to get to them if you don't wanna to go to that actual path. Okay, in that log, you're gonna see those queries that were actually executed. You will also see the command timeout for that query execution. This alone by itself does not give you the actual query duration. To get the query duration, there's another config file we're gonna go need to look at. And that is the diagnostics config file. Again, I've got the name of the file right here. And this file actually has really one big setting in there and that's trace verbosity. By default, it's set to four, which is information and higher. We wanna set that to five. When we do that, we also need to restart the on-premises data gateway Windows service. Big warning here, warning. By setting these to on, it's gonna really bloat your log file. And it could also impact performance depending on the load of the gateway. So just be aware of that when you turn this on. This is not something you're gonna to wanna to leave on. When you're done with these settings, you turn them off. Otherwise, they will severely bloat the logs and chew up your hard disk space, cause performance problems, and just cause headaches. So in general, keep them off if you're not using them. But when you enable the trace verbosity to five and you're emitting query traces, you can actually see the duration of the query. When you go to the log, it's gonna be really scary, I know, but I'm gonna give you three items here you can search on to get to the queries fast. There are three activity types that you are interested in. The first one is MGEQ. This is for ADO queries, so ADO.net. So this is gonna be SQL Server. This is direct query type connections. Also from a trace perspective, I found that all the mashup items are actually going through this item as well. That may change though, I don't know. But just be aware that right now, as of this video recording, when I tried it, the mashup items were going through the ADO query item, which is MGEQ. So when you search for MGEQ, you're gonna get right to the line item where the query was executing. The next one is MGEO, which is for OLEDB queries. And as I mentioned before, this is for Analysis Services 2016 and later. This is for SAP HANA, and there may be a few others. So just realize that there may be OLEDB queries depending on your data source. The last one is MGEM, which is for mashup queries. But like I said before, when I was looking at the SQL Server item going through just a refresh or schedule refresh, it was going through the ADO query, but just be aware that it could be any one of these three activity types. Okay, the way I look for query duration is first and foremost, I look for activity type. This will get me to the query in question. I can validate that that's the query I'm interested in by looking at the second GUID that's on that entry. That is the request ID. All entries that are part of that request will have that same request ID. So I can search up and find the connection string that's associated with that to validate, yes, this is for the data source in question that I'm looking for. Or to reverse engineer and say, look, I know I've got a long query. What's the data source? You can go find that. Okay, once I have all of that, I'm gonna to continue to search on that activity type. The next one after it, depending on the load, it should match between the request ID and the activity type, those should match for this executing query. Okay, and the last entry you're gonna see when you query for the activity type is you're gonna see the fire activity completed successfully event. And as part of that, it will show you the duration. The duration is in milliseconds. You can validate that time by comparing the date timestamps for the start entry and the end entry as well, if you want to validate that. So basically I just search for those activity types, validate that the request IDs match, 
and you should be good to go. That will help you weed through the plethora of entries that are in that log file. Okay, and to round this all off, like I said before, make sure you turn these settings off. Emit query traces, change it to false, and change trace verbosity back to four, and then restart the service. Okay, let me know if you learned something new here or if you have questions about anything I mentioned, go and leave that down below and I will be happy to answer that for you. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. Every Tuesday I do a technical item such as this and every Thursday I do an information roundup where I find things interesting and share that out with you. Thank you so much for watching and keeping awesome.